Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about my home surveillance setup, where my cameras actually are on my house. I'm going to show you which cameras I use, their locations, the directions they point, and maybe it gives you some ideas of what you could do if you're building out your home surveillance setup. Now when you're building out your setup, the first decision you have to make is are you going to go with network cameras? That is my suggestion specifically PoE cameras or power over ethernet. What that means is you can run a single category cable, like a Cat6 cable to each camera. It carries the power and it carries the data. That gets connected to a network switch and goes onto your network and then eventually, in my case, goes to a Blue Iris PC, Blue Iris software running on a PC. The older style camera and NVR systems, you would run power and you would run video, usually like an RCA cable, to each camera and then it would all come back to an NVR box. The modern way to do it is to use your existing IT network that's in your house or business and let the cameras run over that. So that's what I've done at my home and I'm gonna show you. So let's first talk about the cameras that I use. I have eight of these Hike Vision cameras now, Hike Vision cameras have been banned by the US government. I bought these before there were any issues with that. So cut me some slack, those who know about this. Um, I do segment these cameras so they don't touch the internet. I have eight of these. Now these are called dome cameras for obvious reasons. There's a dome, there's a plastic dome. You might see these at a bank or somewhere that's secure because the dome is hard plastic. It's difficult to break. Of course, if you use a baseball bat, you probably could if it's within reaching distance. It does protect the camera. However, if I were to do this again, I would use turret cameras. So my suggestion is to use turret cameras. So I should have probably bought this version. Now, you might say why, because it's not protected. Well, the dome on these cameras gets dirty very quickly. And it also reflects, especially at night. There's night vision, there's these little night vision LEDs that are inside these cameras and it reflects back off the dome. So sometimes you have to, I often will have to clean the dome of these cameras to be able to see clearly at night. So I personally think for most home and business users, go with the turret style. Again, I went with Hike Vision. In today's day and age, I probably would go with Amcrest. That's what I've been going with at more recent installs at friends' houses. In fact, I have one sitting right here. This is the Amcrest. Um, I think this is about the $60 camera, but it, it could either mount to like a ceiling or a wall. It kind of spins inside here. It's got a microphone and again, it's PoE. So I have it connected to a single network cable. The other one is if you didn't have PoE, you could plug in power, but that's how it's connected and it's going into a switch that I have sitting right over here. By the way, that camera is not part of my setup. These are just my lab cameras. So in addition to these eight dome cameras, which I'll show you a drawing of where those are on my house and outside my house in a minute, but I also have an Amcrest PTZ camera. Now this is the exact one I have. Amcrest makes several different models most of them are more expensive. If I scroll down, you can probably see $560, $860. I've been super happy with this camera. And I think that this is probably your best bang for your buck, to be honest with you. I don't know that you need to go up to the higher models um, for 400 bucks. A lot of times this will go on sale. I've seen it go down to in the 320s. Sometimes it's 359. So this, this is about as high as it goes but 25x optical zoom and optical zoom means the lens is actually moving it's not digital it's not cropping in the lens is actually moving i've been super happy with this camera it's heavy duty made of all this is made of metal there's a metal mount um, and it goes 360 degrees around the night vision is incredible. We'll just look at a picture here of someone's backyard. It can shoot so far, the night vision, the IR uh, infrared that's there. It's also IP66 rated. You can see 328 feet of night vision. It does require PoE plus. That's a little bit more power than the regular PoE. So you just have to make sure that your network switch can support that. Most modern network switches do. And by the way, I'll have links in the description, their associate links 
to if you do want to purchase any of these cameras down below. So now that you see the cameras that I'm using, let's take a look at the drawings. So you can see where I have them placed and I'll talk through why I put them where I put them. So we're on a corner, so there's roads on either side and obviously our property line. So there's the backyard here, front yard here, and this is a top-down look. This is the driveway. These are all the dome cameras. And then the PTZ camera is actually mounted to a pole that's on my deck. Now the PTZ camera, if we start there, it pans, it goes on what's called a tour. So it starts, shoots all the way from over here, then it goes to here, then here, then here, then here, then here, and then it goes back. And it does that all day and night. So every, I think, five seconds it moves, and that's called a tour. And that's something you could do with PTZ cameras and with Blue Iris, um, the security camera software that we talk about on this channel. By the way, subscribe if you want to hear more about that and videos like this. So anyway, the PTZ camera does a tour. I like having it do a tour because if someone were in the yard, it kind of looks like it's following them. There are some more advanced cameras out there that if it sees motion, it actually will move toward that. In fact, you might even be able to do it with this camera. I don't have that set up. I just have it doing a regular tour. These dome cameras are mounted, most of them are mounted on my soffits. The soffit is kind of the overhang um, over the side of the house. The house is a ranch, so it's one level. So it's easy to reach the soffits. And then you might be asking, what the heck is this tree that looks like a Christmas tree? It's just because I couldn't find a regular tree, but it, it is a oak tree. And there are two cameras mounted to this oak tree. So, I don't know, five years ago when we actually put up all these cameras. By the way, this is as much as we could say about Hike Vision, um, they've all lasted five years with no issues being out in the elements. So, they're good cameras. The cameras on this tree we actually dug a trench from the house so we ran wires from about over here uh, in conduit and then we dug a trench from the house out to this tree and this camera that's on this tree shoots in this direction over here now this camera shoots in this direction over here so the backyard is covered by this camera, which kind of covers this whole area, this camera, which covers the center, and this camera, which covers this corner. And then for redundancy, we have the PTZ camera. Now the PTZ camera is also neat. If you do hear something or see something in the yard, especially at night, you can control the PTZ in Blue Iris and you could zoom 25x. So something that's way in the back of my yard, it's uh, it's about a half acre, so it does get back pretty far, whether it's an animal or something moving kind of in the back, it's like a woods area, I can zoom that camera all the way in and see what's going on, really anywhere in this backyard area. So even though these cameras are good, you might notice on this page for these dome cameras that it says 2.8 millimeter. What that means is it's a very wide angle shot. If I were to go up to the four millimeter, it's a little bit more zoomed in. I think they do even have an eight and a 16 millimeter. That's pretty zoomed in. Mine are all 2.8. Mine are all wide angle lenses. So they're getting a, a broad area, but if there was something that was happening way back down here, you wouldn't get a clear picture of it. That's the point of the PTZ camera in the backyard. The problem with cameras that are mounted to your soffits around your house is if someone is hiding up against your house or they're able to kind of sneak by, get behind a bush, your cameras are pointed out towards your yard. That person, that burglar is trying to get in, you may never have caught on any of your cameras. So that's part of the reason why I also have these cameras pointing, especially this one, pointing back at the house. So I can see if someone was in this direction, I can see what they're up to. So if we go over to the side of the house, this is just to pro provide coverage. Again, pretty wide angle. The PTZ will cover. If I were to spin it, I could get this angle and point it back at the house. And then I do have a camera that's right over my light in the driveway. So I can 
see who's pulling in the driveway. The reason why I did that is I want a clear picture. If somebody's pulling in the driveway, I want to be able to see their license plate. And I also want to be able to draw motion zones on the driveway in Blue Iris. This camera gets this half of the front yard. There is some overlap on the driveway. And this camera points toward this whole half of the front yard. Let's talk a little bit more about wiring and how these cameras are connected. The PTZ camera has conduit that goes down the pole and then it goes along my deck and this is my garage on this side. It goes into the garage and then up to a network switch that's in my garage. And that's where this camera connects to and the cameras that are on this side of the house all connect to the network switch in the garage. Then there's a Cat6 cable that runs from this network switch to a network switch that's inside the main part of the house. These cameras, these three cameras, the backyard and then the two front yard cams, all go up through the soffit into the attic. And then they come down in the same closet that the main network switch for the house is in. So all the cables come down into one closet, one network switch. Now I do have a second rack, network rack, in the basement. And that's where my modem is, and there's a second switch, that's where my router is. So these two cameras run, remember I said there's conduit underground, we dug a trench, it's conduit underground, runs against the house, and then goes into the house, into the basement, and runs over to the basement rack. And there's connectivity, fiber connectivity, between my top floor and my bottom floor, between the two network racks. So when you're building out your home network, you want to consider what switches you are going to use. The router connects into the switch. So you'll have a connection from your router into your switch, and then the cameras will connect into the switch as well. The cameras will be powered over power over ethernet from that switch, but they'll get an IP address, so they'll actually be assigned their own address from your router. This is kind of some basics of networking, but with the new modern way of doing cameras and surveillance, everything runs over the network. So you have to have some basic knowledge of networking to be able to do this. And also remember that the lens type, so for example, the 2.8 millimeter matters. Since these are all wide angle lenses, sure, I can get all this coverage, but if something happens over here and I need to see someone's face, because it's so wide angle, it's not gonna be zoomed in. When I zoom in, even though it's maybe a 4K camera, when I try to zoom in on that person's face, it's going to be pixelated. So if there's a spot, like let's say somewhere on this road where I know there are a lot of issues, accidents, whatever, I may wanna have a dedicated camera that has a lens like a four millimeter, eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, or a zoom lens that I like a PTZ camera in which I can zoom and keep it locked onto that area because the wide angle cameras are great for knowing what's going on around your house. But if anything is far away, they're just not gonna do the job. I mentioned all the cameras come in over cat six, go into network switches, and then they're given an IP address by my router. But my Blue Iris PC is also on the network. So how does the Blue Iris PC see the cameras? Well, that's where you'll go into Blue Iris. I have a video on adding cameras in Blue Iris, and you'll add each of these cameras once you get them plugged in. And because your Blue Iris PC is on the same network as the cameras, it will be able to see the cameras and pull down their stream, the actual video stream that they're seeing, into Blue Iris. So now my eight or nine cameras, I can see on a grid and they're recording to the hard drive that's inside the Blue Iris PC. Don't think you have to do home runs of all your cameras, a Cat6, back to one single switch in your house. So if you have five cameras that are all gonna be in one spot, like attached to the side of your garage, you can put a switch there and run a single Cat6. I would run a backup if you can, run two but you can essentially run a single Cat6 cable from that network switch to another network switch. You can daisy chain the switches. So instead of running five, six Cat6 cables, you can run one or two and have a switch there and a switch in another spot. 
I hope you find that helpful to see how I have my home surveillance system set up. There will be links below to the cameras that I personally like. There'll also be a link to an affiliate link to purchase Blue Iris. Blue Iris is about 70 US dollars, runs on a Windows PC, and in my opinion is one of the best camera management NVR softwares out there. So. If you do want to purchase it, the link is down below. Also, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you found this helpful. We will see you in the next video. Take care.